Hi, today we'll be speaking about influenza, its replication cycle and some drugs which act on the replication cycle of influenza. Now, let's go to today's topic. Influenza belongs to a RNA group of viruses all or the orthomyxovirus so that is the group which influenza belongs to influenza are mainly divided into influenza a and influenza b viruses so now we need to know the structure of the influenza virus before going into its replication cycle so here also you have a outer layer which consists of heme agglutinin neuraminidase and an ion channel called M2 ion channel and here also there is a capsid which has an RNA and it has a RNA polymerase. So here what happens is that this is the basic structure we should all know. So the, you have three structural proteins, the heme agglutinin, the M2 ion channels and the neuraminidase and inside you have an RNA and you have a RNA polymerase. So what happens during infection? For example, this is the host cell. The first function comes out of the heme agglutinin. Here we have your cyanic acid in the host cell which helps the heme agglutinin to come and bind to the host cell. So this is the function of the heme agglutinin, binding of the heme agglutinin to the sialic acid. So what happens is that the virus, for example this is the sialic acid, the heme agglutinin comes and binds here. So before we move in detail about this, we should know a bit about the heme agglutinin. Heme agglutinin is not as it is. It is formed from a precursor called HA0 which is hydrolyzed into HA1 and HA2. So when we zoom into the structure of the heme agglutinin, we can say that it consists of a globular head which is your HA1 and a fusion stem which is the HA2. The function of the globular head is the attachment to the sialic acid that that is the function of HA1 and HA2 is the fusion domain or it attaches to the fusion peptide which is present in our cell. So this is in short the structure of the heme agglutinin. So once the attachment of the heme agglutinin with the sialic acid takes place this get inside the host cell. Here now it has to efflux the contents here into the cell. So what it does is that the next the function of M2 comes into play. This M2 leads to influx of H plus ions inside the cell. So what happens there is fusion of this membrane along with exposure of the HA2 domain here. The exposure of the HA2 domain with the fusion peptide and the raising of the pH due to influx of the H plus ions, we release the contents here into the nucleus. So now the action of your RNA polymerase leads to formation of the mRNA and the complementary RNA. This mRNA leads to synthesis of structural proteins such as your heme agglutinin, M2 ions and your neuraminidase. Right? So everything is again packaged and assembled here into a capsid. Your HA, everything. And then it gets outside the cell here. Now, 
another problem comes that even when the virus get outside the host cell it is still attached the sialic acid domain is still attached to the hemagglutinin the sialic acid is still attached to the hemagglutinin so now the function of neuraminase comes in this neuraminase what it does is that it cleaves the hemagglutinin from the sialic acid so that is the function of neuraminase which we should know so now we know the function of the hemagglutinin now we know the function of m2 channels and we know the function of neuraminase so this is in short the life cycle of the influenza virus here we should know that influenza a only consists of m2 channels whereas influenza b does not consist of m2 channels whereas the other proteins are present so we discovered drugs which could block the m2 channels called amantidin amantidin and rimantidin what they did is that they blocked the m2 channels and this prevented the influx of the h plus ions and it did not allow the ph to be raised and it did not allow the efflux of the contents of the uh, virus into the host cell so this was the function of amantidin so this is given in dosage of 100 mg so what is the other use of amantidin where it is used is that it is used in parkinson's disease amantidin is another drug which is importantly used in parkinson's disease so these were the first group of drugs but later what happened is that this virus reacted to our drugs and caused mutation in your m2 channels and rather rendered these drugs ineffective so these drugs developed resistance in case of influenza so next we came up with some drugs which could act on the neuraminidase and block the activity of neuraminidase here so those drugs are called oseltamivir which was mostly used when there is outbreak of h1n1 with its strain named tamiflu or swine flu so when there is a swine flu out outbreak so we tend to use oseltamivir which is very much useful nowadays and it is a neuraminidase inhibitor so it acts on the neuraminidase it blocks the cleavage of the uh, hemagglutinin from the sialic acid so now we have mainly two group of drugs that is one preventing the phosphorylation of uh, by blocking the m2 channels that is amantadine and rimantadine and next group of drugs called oseltamivir which can block the function of your neuraminidase so what are the drugs which are in development for this virus so we have certain drugs which can block the hydrolysis of ha0 or which can block the function of ha1 and which can block the function of ha2 so all these drugs are still in development but i would like to highlight a particular drug here called das131 why because this is the only antiviral drug which acts uh, on the host cell so it acts on the sialic acid here so that the heme agglutinin cannot bind to the host cell it is the only antiviral drug till date which can act on the host cell and prevent the function of the uh, virus on the host cell so we have three group of drugs now called uh, das131 and certain group of drugs which are already in use for influenza so now we know that there are important drugs which can block the function of hemagglutinin which can block the function of m2 and which can block the function of neuraminidase so these three groups are mostly useful in the treatment of influenza virus so we should know have an inherent knowledge of these drugs so that we can treat this disease stay tuned to my channel for more videos and more diseases thank you